This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Good morning. Um, as we're loading up the uh, case presentation talk, in front of you, you all have a, uh, the voting panel that, uh, that has been put in front of you. I know there's plenty for everyone, so if you feel like the, you don't want to share, just reach over to the next one and, uh, and grab that from that person. The intent of this case presentation that we're going to go through several of them during this symposium is that we're going to present the case and then allow some time for an audience response. There's no exact right answer on any of the questions, but uh, we, of course, had to choose one avenue for treatment and management of the patient. And so uh, that's what we're going to go through uh, today. So as we know, for chronic aortic dissection, uh, there's 40% uh, of all repairs have an associated chronic dissection for aortic aneurysms, and they've a large predominance of patients with uh, chronic aortic dissections have had an ascending aortic repair uh, for previous other reasons, oftentimes for dissection. Endovascular treatment, though, has gained significant traction in this field as the survival and uh, midterm results are very promising with over 90% aortic specific survival in these patients. So what we know is that the uh, endovascular aneurysm repair or the dissection repair for chronic aortic dissections can decrease that false lumen pressure as we talked about earlier. So we've demonstrated success. We have 30-day outcomes that are seeming to be promising comparing open versus endovascular repair. And we do know, though, that there needs to be very care careful patient selection when opting to perform a thoracic endovascular aneurysm repair in the face of a chronic aortic dissection. So here's the case we're going to present. A 55-year-old gentleman presents with a six-year history of severe tearing, a six-hour history, I'm sorry, of severe tearing back pain. Fifteen years prior to this presentation, he had a type A dissection that did extend to the right common iliac artery. He had his aortic root replaced, had an aortic valve replacement. And ever since that time and that repair, he's been asymptomatic, and he had no follow-up with his uh, cardiac surgeon. And six months prior to us meeting this individual, he had similar symptoms, had a CT scan performed, and that also demonstrated that he had a type B dissection, the uh, arch had healed, and that he had aortic degeneration to five centimeters. So on his presentation, uh, I won't mention his blood pressure for the present time, but he had pain that felt different to the prior ascending aortic dissection. He had chest, back, and upper abdominal pain. Past medical history was significant really for a prior left nephrectomy, the aortic valve and root replacement, some smoking history, but relatively normal labs. So this is a demonstration of his aortic arch. Basically what you can see in the video on the right is it pans around his uh, descending, the proximal descending thoracic aorta is that he does in fact have a type B aortic dissection that begins just, just, just distal to the left subclavian artery and the normal aorta, the normal proximal aorta measures 33 millimeters. The uh, dissection did, in fact, extend throughout the entire thoracic aorta with a maximal diameter of 5.8 centimeters. And in the abdominal aorta, he had 2.8 centimeters at maximal diameter, and all of the visceral vessels were fed off of the true lumen, except for the right renal artery, which had a very large fenestration leading to it, no evidence of malperfusion, normal creatinine, as I mentioned earlier. So now you're faced with this patient, 55-year-old gentleman, prior type A dissection, who's had an a aortic valve and ascending arch repair, who now presents with a chronic type B dissection, maybe acute within the last six months, subacute within the last six months. How would you manage this patient? Time for your audience response panels. Anti-impulse control and pain control, A, stent graft placement in the descending thoracic aorta, 
open repair or thoracoabdominal aortic repair. All right, so it looks like 48% would have placed a stent graft in the descending thoracic aorta, and another 38% would have done anti-impulse therapy. We chose anti-impulse therapy in this patient. Uh, he did, in fact, have an acute hypertensive episode that was stabilized, um, and we placed him on a couple of drips. 72 hours, his pain persisted, felt like it got a little bit better, uh, but now his heart rate and blood pressure are well controlled. Uh, we're basically at a systolic blood pressure of 100 to 110, and he's relatively stabilized. How would you now manage this patient? Continue the anti-impulse therapy, CT angiogram, thoracic endovascular aneurysm repair with uh, coverage of the left subclavian, carotid subclavian bypass, TVAR with coverage of the left subclavian, open thoracic aortic aneurysm repair, or continue the anti-impulse therapy and repeat his CTA in one month, assuming that you didn't fix it the first time since 48% of you did that. All right. Looks like we have a majority, though it's split, 35% would continue anti-impulse therapy and repeat the CT angiogram in one month. And then for second, uh, TVAR with coverage of the left subclavian and carotid subclavian uh, bypass. The, uh, I think both of those would be uh, central effective solutions. Um, and actually, in this particular patient, both of those were offered to him. But uh, he was scared and decided that he wanted to opt for the repeat CT angiogram in one month. Um, and so he did return in the one month. He continued to have pain and was requesting the repair uh, as he essentially could no longer function in life secondary to, uh, to just some back discomfort uh, and the stress of worrying about his aneurysm. So I just want to give you a little bit of the anatomy prior to going through this, but what would be your operative approach now? You, he now says, I need an operation. You have a three centimeter landing zone. If you cover the left subclavian artery, he is right vertebral artery dominant, and uh, you're gonna size this based off of the normal proximal aorta and knowing that you must cover the, the left subclavian artery. So would you cover the uh, presumed entry tear only, cover the uh, thoracic aorta to the level of the celiac subclavian revascularization if symptomatic? C would be cover the thoracic aorta to the level of the celiac with a carotid subclavian bypass. Would you coil embolize the false lumen, covering, then cover the thoracic aorta to the level of the celiac with a carotid subclavian bypass? Or would you perform an open thoracic aortic aneurysm repair? Let's see, 5% would do an open repair, and B, uh, cover the thoracic aorta to the level of celiac with subclavian revascularization. Maybe I should turn this over to the panel. Dr. Tudor, uh, Dr. Paniton, how would you manage this since we're now committing to an operation at this point? I, I guess initially you, you, you thought this patient was an acute type B, and I think you went medical treatment. Um, uh, usually when I do that, I, I do a one week, I do a pre-discharge CTA before letting the patient go. So that might be a little bit of a different thing than what I think people were going for 30 days, but we do it pre-discharge. For that patient, now you're in subacute or you know chronic. It's always a very uh, gray zone area. Uh, I would uh, clearly uh, pick C as the answer. In, in patient with chronic dissection, if the first procedure you do is you start to sacrifice a subclavian artery in somebody who's got a type B all the way down involving the paravisceral and infravenal aorta, uh, I don't think it's time to start to sacrifice a, a subclavian artery. So I would do uh, I would do C. I agree with that. I mean, there's a good chance this guy eventually is going to need a, a thoracic abdominal, in which case he certainly will need his left, uh, his left subclavian flow and, and all its collaterals to the spine. Well, we, uh, we talked to the patient, obviously, about all of his options, um, and that being one that we offered to him. He was 55 years old. He uh, wanted to have the open repair. And so that's what, uh, and we also felt that given his young age and the fact that he had had that long interval of lack of follow-up for that period of time where he'd essentially gone six years without having any follow-up from his ascending repair, we replaced his uh, descending thoracic aorta um, from the just distal to the left subclavian down to the uh, descending thoracic aorta at the level of the diaphragm. 
Uh, he did well from his operation. His pain uh, after his thoracotomy incision uh, was gone. Uh, his pain, he subsequently felt a lot better. Um, and we uh, are following him still, and he's doing very well. So we all know that the uh, endovascular repair of dissections is evolving. Um, endovascular repair certainly is, uh, is an option, and a lot of people would choose that. There are still some young patients, though, and those who have maybe poor compliance who potentially, obviously, a patient individualized approach should be taken, and uh, I think we're going to move into the chronic aortic dissections and aneurysm talks here later. Uh, just a quick question. When you uh, considered the open repair, did, did you consider doing DHCA in this patient to avoid cross-clamping the arch? Because in a patient with a previous type A and a dissection that had been gone through that already, I mean, I, I think DHCA and avoiding arch clamping, I, I, probably that might have been the way I would have done it. We uh, actually, for this particular patient, we. Uh, we had, were either going to do left heart bypass or uh, hypothermic uh, circulatory arrest. And uh, we had the assistance of our cardiac surgeons, and they felt that based upon the ease in which they were doing the left heart bypass, that that, that was probably the way to go. But we were actually prepared in that operation to go both ways. All right. Thank you very much.